Now outside of being free, I think one of the best selling points for DaVinci Resolve is its tracking capabilities. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the different ways that you can track inside of DaVinci Resolve, both for the free version and the studio version. So this first example that I'm going to show you is probably going to be the most common version of uh, tracking and you can pretty much put this anywhere. I mean, like I use it for putting it on walls and whatnot, but I mean, the possibilities are endless. This first one is going to be called planar tracking. So what we're going to do is while we have media in one selected, and by the way, if your stuff doesn't snap to a grid, uh, right click your grid and then arrange tools and then choose to grid. But anyways, while you have media in one selected, hit shift space to bring up the select tool page. And guess what? You're going to type in planar tracker. I don't know why I didn't just hit enter right then and there. But while it's also, or, or while this is selected, all you have to do is you see this crosshair you got, you're just going to outline the basic shape of what you're trying to track. It doesn't have to be precise like uh, what I did, but you know, take your time ish. Don't spend too much time. Anyways, we're going to move on over to the inspector. We are starting on frame zero, but if you weren't starting on frame zero, what you have to do is hit set your reference time. And that's telling DaVinci Resolve, Hey, look, we're, we're on frame 124. We're going to start tracking at 124. We're not going to do that though. That, that control Z. All right. Set your, set, set your reference time. That's the first thing that you're going to do. Uh, by the way, if you don't know this go button, it takes you back to that reference time. Boom. Go. Okay. Anyways, I'm done. Tracker. A lot of times I find it helpful to change it to a, a hybrid point slash area and your motion type. It kind of depends. I mean, the, the, the further you go down, the more intense it is going to be on your computer. I mean, it's all self-explanatory. You can mess around with the settings if you want, but why just leave it on perspective. All you have to do now is just track your entire clip. So if you're starting somewhere in the middle, you're going to have to track forwards and backwards, but I'm not, I'm starting at the beginning. So I'm just going to track to the beginning or to the end rather boom we're, we're done here there's a, a a few things that we can do here so like if we wanted to just have some text right here we're gonna change our uh operation mode from track to corner pin and guess what we have corner pins that we're going to align in the same way that we had our little track so something like that and then you're going to take a text node from your hot bar a little t uh, but drop that in, connect it to the green arrow. Cause that's your foreground and type in some text. So text, uh, you can kind of see it back there. So let's bring that up. Not taxi, <laughs> uh, just regular text. There you go, man. If you were asking yourself, how did I get that black background? I dropped in a merge or a background node right here. Uh, this is just a color node. Um, that's going to happen. Don't worry. It's okay. What you can do is change that operation mode from uh, over to under. Now it's under your text. There you go. Crazy. Now the one nice thing about the planar tracker is that if we go back to track, you can see we have create planar transform. If you click that button, you get a planar transform node. What is this? Well, it is all of your tracking data. So if I were to take this and plug it in right here, now what we can do set up basically what we had before. Let's take this copy paste. If we connect it, nothing's going to happen, at least not in the way that we want. So we got to add another node corner positioner. Oh my goodness. What are we doing? It's just the same thing as before. However, it not really because we have a little bit more wiggle room. If we, if we jump back to this, um, corner pin, I'm going to change this text color to red. I'm going to zoom in here on our first text, right? If I make this bigger, let's just change it to one. It gets cut off and that's because our corner pins only extend out to here, right? But in our text one, one. If we change it to one, I said one a lot. You you can see though, now we can put stuff outside of our corner pin. It, we're not tied down to this. So what's really cool is that you can take like a transform node and 
do stuff, right? Guys, I messed up. Do not put the transform node after the corner positioner. That is going to mess things up. If you put it before, now your text will move in the way that you thought it would. So that's the advantage of the planar transform. And that's how I get other effects like putting text on the walls or text or, or, or like the kill feed on the wall, kill feed on the gun. I have tutorials about that stuff. Planar transform, planar tracker, that is the number one tracking node to memorize or, or rather get familiar with. Another nice thing about the planar tracker is that you can use it to create tracking data for your masks. So we're just going to track this little bit of the cliff and we're going to create a mask of it. And then our text will be behind the cliff. Uh, and then we only need this amount of tracking data because the cliff isn't covering the, tr uh, the text anymore. So we're just going to stop it right there. And now we're going to take a polygon node from the hot bar and we're just going to create a little mask. Boom. Boom. Uh, we're going to invert that mask. Let's clean it up a little bit. Okay. So we got our mask and look what happens. It sticks pretty well. I mean, it comes up a little bit, but that's okay because what we can do is animate that mask. So these are all of our keyframes for, for our planar transform. I started at the end, so I might as well go to the beginning. I'll bring these over. It's not necessary because we don't have, um, you know, any text on this, but maybe you want to do that. Watch what happens. Look, our, our mask is all nice and animated. It's, it's perfect. Dude, planar tracking, so powerful. Okay, so that that's officially everything you know you need to know about the planar tracker. It is so powerful, and it is by far one of the most useful tools to learn inside of DaVinci Resolve. So this next method is just basic uh, motion tracking. And even though it's basic, you can still get really 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 cool effects so let's just uh, go right on into fusion here um what you're gonna do uh bring up your select tool page select uh or shift space and type in tracker and it's just that regular tracking node it just says tracker tra bring that in oh now if um your node doesn't go into the main timeline pipeline what you can do is hold shift left click right you drag it right on top of it it highlights you let go Boom, gets connected. Amazing. Let's uh let's start from the beginning. And we have this this little box here, okay? And, well, rather we have we have three, okay? So this top left one here, that's how you actually move this around, okay? We can we can drag this, click it around. Now this uh center one with the crosshair, this is where what we're actually tracking. So let's move this uh over to raise his head and that means everything in this box is what we're tracking. And this outside box is our, uh, it, it, it's our search area. Okay. So, uh, what I want you to do is you would refine what you're actually tracking. So high contrast areas are easily tracked. So we have this nice glowing yellow. We're going to bring this in a little bit, a lot of it. And we'll just leave our, our search size the same. We don't need to mess with that. What we want to do is change our adaptive mode. We're going to switch that to best match. Now, a match tolerance of 0.1 will give you a halfway decent track. But we're going to bring this down to like 0 0.05. And we're just going to track from our current time. And yeah, let's, let's zoom out here. We should have a, like a perfect track, dude. Like, look at this. This is amazing. We, we go down. Little little glitchy poo right there. Yeah, because there's a little bit of uh, what you might call it. So down here uh, at the very bottom, you'll see track centered. We can just delete that keyframe. Bam! Now it's all smoothed out. Going back up. This should also be good. Yeah. There we go. And now we're at the end of the clip. So what can this do though? Even like we got all this tracking data. Well, my friend, what we need to do? Switch our operation mode. Uh, we're going to go to match move. Now, foreground over background. What does this mean? Well, if we wanted to, let's drop in some text, connect it to the green arrow, the foreground element. We're going to type in text. Let's place that over raise his head. Guess what? This is all tracked in. Text. It's tracked to raise his head. And it doesn't have to stay on raise his head, as you as you saw. Like, we can we can put this anywhere. Let's, let's put it at her feet, right? It, it's still tracked to her head. 
It's just basic, very basic motion tracking. There's no perspective shifts here. Another cool little effect we can get out of this is we change our merge. Well, let's go, let's go foreground only. I mean, I mean background only. What this does is it tracks movement. So you can see how Ray's is just stuck on the left side of our screen. We can use that to our advantage. Hot bar, uh, transform. Drop that in right there. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna move this arrow over. We're just gonna zoom in a lot here and we're gonna uh, play this and watch. Ray's just stays right here. So now we've added some like complex uh, camera movement without having to do any keyframing. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about basic motion tracking. So I'm going to be honest, I don't remember if this next version is available inside of the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I believe it is, but if not, I am so sorry. But this is a super powerful tracking method and it's actually inside of the color tab. So let's just take a look at what I got going on here. In my node right now, I have a lens flare. That is not in the free version, but the tracking method that I'm using is FX tracking. So let's uh, retrack this in. Now, just for reference, this is what the lens flare looks like without the tracker. You can see it's just stationary. It doesn't move. It doesn't stay right here. It, uh, okay, so let's track this in. Most of you probably know this, but your tracking window is right here. And what you want to do, though, is change your tracking type. So we have three different modes to choose from, and we're going to choose FX Tracker. Now, the thing with the FX Tracker is it's not like the regular tracking window where you would draw an object and then you track that object in. No, 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 no. You choose specific points that you want tracked in. So this is almost like 3D tracking. So in order to do that, what you do is you head down to the bottom left-hand corner where you see this arrow with a little crosshair. And then a blue crosshair appears and you just move that to wherever you want. And like I said earlier, high contrast areas get tracked in the best. So we're just going to move this, uh, these, these little tracking points to those high contrast areas. Now, the reason why I'm placing the tracking points on the fence opposed to like the shadow areas is because we want the correct perspective and things out in the distance are going to move at a different speed opposed to things closer to us. And we want that right perspective so that this gets tracked in properly. So all we're going to do is just track forwards and backwards and our uh, lens flare should stay in the same place. There you go. So let's just say we wanted to have our lens flare. Hold up. Give me a minute. Let's say we wanted our lens flare right here on the, the edge of the cliff. I'm just going to turn the effect node off real quick. We can track the edge of this cliff up until it goes away. And then we can just add more tracking points. So just for now, this is what I'm going to leave it at. And I'm going to track forward. You can see they're starting to disappear. We have those ones stay in frame. That's great. Let's turn our lens flare back on. Oh. We got a little bit and a little bit. Let's play this. Let's see how well this stuck. I mean, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Obviously, this lens flare looks a little funky like this, but it's to showcase that the tracking, you, you can track things that aren't always in frame, which is really great because you can place these points down wherever. And yeah, super powerful tracking tool. Now, this last version is not available in the free version. It is 3D camera tracking. So we're going to jump right into Fusion. And we're going to hit Shift Space to bring up the Select Tool page. And we're going to type in Tracker and Camera Tracker. We could preview the tracking points, but just hit Auto Track. Very cool. We're going to head on over to uh, solve camera. It's not necessary because we're not actually filming this with a camera. We don't know the focal length or anything. And what we're going to do is just hit solve. So we have a average solve error of 0.5 and that's actually really good. Now the, the next thing that we have to do is go over to export. We have to set our ground plane. Um, so 3D scene, unalign and 
uh, origin that's where the thing is going to spawn in at first so we're just gonna select uh, I want some text right there so we're gonna select that mm, like this and we're gonna set location and we're also going to set uh, our ground plane that uh, that's our orientation so that knows exactly where the ground is. We're gonna change this back to online. And now we're gonna export. You'll have a, a whole bunch of uh, different nodes that appear. Just get them, you know, sorted. Uh, we really don't need the tracker, but it's it's okay, it's okay. Let's just take the output of this, connect it. I know I'm kind of flying through that, but it's okay. So there you go. Uh, you can see we're now working in 3D space. And this is a really nice way of getting some like 3D text, let's say. So we're gonna drop in uh, a text 3D, connect that to the merge, and it should spawn right around there, right? So let's uh, type in text. Whoa, that's a little big. Let's bring that down. Transform, that's how we're gonna move our text. And theoretically, we can make this text look like it was actually in the game. We can have a shadow casted. This is a very complicated process, so I'm just going to blaze over everything and just kind of show you the end result. We have our lighting pass and we have our shadow pass and it, it's the result is great. Okay, so after doing some cleaning up, this is what the end result looks like. We got some color on the text, we got a little bit of shadow on the text, and then we have the casted shadow from the text. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Make sure you like if this helped. Subscribe for more tutorials. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.